For it isn't my fault that I am out here getting loose. I'm the pudding in the pudding in the proof. Have to play it on my chin. I've been watching uh, Lizzo's reality show that she has for picking her backup dancers, and it's actually so cute and affirming. I've cried a few times. I always say how I'm gonna talk about a TV show at some point during midweek, but I never do. <laughs> I had so many people that were like, Kendall, what are your opinions on Love is Blind? Do people even give a fuck about Love is Blind anymore? I'm gonna just talk about shows as I think about it. I might do one on this show, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, hi, hello, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. My last two videos were more serious and I've really felt like it's time to return to some foolishness. The world is heavy enough on its own. So today we're returning to some hood nonsense. Amen, hallelujah. Uh, before we get into that though, let's send it over to Adderall Kenny to secure a bag because nobody watched my last two videos because they didn't care. <laughs> Either that or it got suppressed, which I wouldn't be surprised either. They were heavy topics. Um, uh, but no, we're gonna send it over to Adroll because uh, money is necessary in the world of capitalism. So take it away, Adroll Kenny. Hello everyone, it's Adroll Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and perform better than ever. With optimized gel tips that I undoubtedly have to clean because they were in my ear, you're sure to find a fit that is perfect for your unique ear holes that will provide a perfect fit and comfortable wear. And once you have that perfect fit, they won't budge, they won't come at your ear, baby. No, no, they won't come at your ear. They offer eight hours of playtime, a 32 hour battery life, and they're priced just right at about half the price of other premium audio brands. And with quality like that, that's probably why they have over 48,000 five-star reviews. So if you'd like to check out Raycon, you can go to buyraycon.com slash Kenny and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Purchase. Big thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery, baby. So, like I said, last time we were here, we were talking about a serious movie. It was actually a two-parter. So it was the second part of the two-parter. Um, <laughs> when I was talking about La Piel Que Habito, or The Skin I Live In, a Spanish film that's about a lot of things that I'm not gonna say so that this video doesn't also get surprised. <laughs> it was a lot, so I took two full weeks to fully unpack it. Last week was just me being like Professor Kenny, and I felt very smart. Um, Thank you. But if you would like to check that out, it'll be linked up above as always. And it'll also be in the Bat Movies and a Beat playlist, as well as the Good Movies and a Glom. A Glom? Good Movies and a Glom. And like I said, since the last two weeks have been quite heavy, I've decided that I want to go to the extreme opposite side of the spectrum. I want the least serious movie I could possibly watch. The best place to go is the cesspool of the internet, Tubi. Again, quick recap if nobody knows what Tubi is. It is a free streaming site where all the best and worst movies go to die. There are like legitimate film on it, but mostly it's just like low budget independent projects from people who just want anybody to take their movie to get it out there. So if ever you see a film is on Tubi or made or distributed by Tubi, that is a amazing sign. <laughs> but that brings us to today's video. I discovered a film with a title so entrancing that I just simply could not say no. And it's also the movie with perhaps the best title I've ever heard of film I think in my life. 2018's My Side Piece Won the Lotto. <laughs> I love black people so much. This video is actually the result of a hilarious Twitter poll that I took a few days ago. This movie won over Beyonce's Obsessed by 0.1%, hilarious. You're welcome, this is how we got here. This movie is probably one of the most confusing watching experiences I've ever had while watching film. And that's coming from a person that considers themselves to be somewhat of a connoisseur of crap. My side piece won the lotto, two th <laughs> sorry. My side piece won the lotto, 2018, is a comedy drama and a musical, if you ask me personally, whose main star and the person that's expected to bring eyes to this film is 
Mama D. I love black people so much. Mama D, as in rapper Lil Scrappy's mother and star of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. With that said, I'm not trying to typecast her. She's also been known to participate a little bit in music, supposedly in that order. In that order, in that order, in that order, in that order. <laughs> I'm so funny. Apparently this isn't her only film credit. She's also accredited in a film called The Products of the American Ghetto, which I've seen clips of. Don't worry, it's on the list. But uh, in this movie, she plays somewhat of a side character. No pun intended. Uh, because she's someone's side chick who won the lotto. Now with that said, if you watch the movie, will that be uh, incredibly apparent? No, because the movie makes no sense. Uh, the movie is incredibly disorganized and jumbled and chaotic. Um, in the way that I just, I just, I adore. Um, but with that said, I had no idea who the supposed side chick was and who won the lotto. And whose side chick was it? Cause there's several people with side chicks in this movie. So who's the one that's making bank? I don't know. So despite the title, that is giving somewhat of a spoiler that Mama D is our side chick that won the lotto. But please know that to go into this movie blind is to accept confusion and just expect it to be a part of the day because you know, nothing is relevant, nothing makes sense. It's all just a drunken, confusing mess. I have the pleasure of sharing with you. <laughs> with that said, I will take it upon myself to at least try to make it make a little bit more sense than it does if you're watching it blind. But please rest assured that this movie is just complete and utter chaos. Like I said, I found this movie on Tubi, which makes it free to watch, but there's unskippable ads, which is just like a double torturous experience. So if you would like to watch it, it's also on YouTube, but to put it on YouTube, they like muted out all the terrible music. And I just think that's part of the experience. <laughs> One thing about Tubi is that it always feels like a favor to somebody and somebody wanted to get their music out there. For instance, the whole title screen is actually, um, a music video, so you wouldn't miss out on that, would you? Regardless, I'll link something down below, probably the 2B one. You want the whole experience, but check out for yourself. Um, So without further ado, this is my side piece won the lotto, 2018. The movie begins with a woman in her car with an incredibly bad blonde wig, yelling at herself with immense amounts of expository dialogue. Making my nerves bad, I got that iron on me. I'm on probation. It's almost as if she knows she's in a movie. Her name is Ebony um, and she is in the middle of a heist, a gas station heist with her cousin, Deshaun. They're currently trying to steal a big roll of lottery scratch off tickets to see if they could get the lottery, which is now at $130 million. This is not the right color. We're gonna have a fun time today. But Deshaun is <clears throat> Miss Selena, Miss Selena Gomez. They sent me this color, I didn't pick this. Actually, I just need to do some contouring. But yeah, Deshaun comes out with the lottery tickets and he goes back in cause he's like, oh, I forgot the money that I was sticking them up for. And Ebony is like, why would you go back in bro? We just left, we, we, we got the tickets, let's just go. He goes back in to get the money. In this short amount of time, we're able to learn a few things about Deshaun. One, Deshaun is an idiot. Two, He's incredibly annoying. <laughs> Three, he really wants a Michael Kors purse. Bitch, I'm gonna get that new Michael Kors purse. Uh, and is willing to risk getting arrested for it. Um, with that said, the police do roll up. Ebony is like, oh my God, I gotta leave. You know, we had a pact. She says this out loud. We had a pact that if if, if the police come, I gotta ride away without him. I'm about to leave Deshaun. I gotta go, he never took this long, man. We made a pack, he told me to roll off if he ain't made it, man. And so that's what she do. Next, we meet a man named Dillard. Dillard is a bald businessman who talks a lot like a pimp named Slickback. Hey, Jeff. Dillard. Hey, I'm gonna have to call you back, bud. I'm in the middle of something right now. Can it wait? And he is currently cheating on his wife, who we never meet. Um, with this girl, she's the wife's makeup girl. Coming in to say no, that's actually not the case. <laughs> and that's what I mean, this movie is incredibly confusing. So apparently this woman is his ex-wife's makeup girl. And when she comes onto the screen, she's like, I just finished doing your wife Susan's makeup. And then the next sentence she says, Do you treat all your exes this good? Confusing, right? So apparently he's not with her anymore, he is divorced from her. And this scene is a perfect example of like a running issue with this movie. And that's, they'll have people say these long background stories 
that have nothing to do with anything that happens in the movie. So if you watch the movie a second time, you're like, why did I need to know that? Why did you tell me that? I feel like it's just so that, you know, Cat Williams over here has something to say. She was pissed when I saw our old house that her and her husband Mike was living in to my baby mama's grandmother. He isn't the only one. They do it for virtually every character. And in a weird way, I feel like they just put it in there to check if we're watching. Kind of feels like its own sort of Netflix, are you still there? <laughs> internal mechanism. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been in a movie where it feels needy, like the movie itself is needy for attention. <laughs> okay, wait, no, maybe I get it now. Okay, so this felt like a random thing to say, but I think it's him doing a very poor job of referencing that later we're gonna find out that he is Ebony's baby daddy. And they started having sex when he was still married to another woman and then she broke up with him. And then apparently he sold the house that her and her new husband was staying at so that Ebony and her grandmama can live in the house. Ooh, messy. Then there's these two. I'm gonna call them Pac Remy and LL Hat. I'm sure they have actual names. Actually, his name is Charles <laughs> because I figured that out later, but I already have him in my notes as LL Hat. So. So their backstory is that he cheated on her and he's acting as if he's like a newly actualized man that he would never do that again. And it's pretty obvious that he's definitely still cheating. <laughs> Their whole relationship and kind of the running gag is that he's like, yeah, I'm completely reformed and he's not <laughs> at all. And she's really of the mindset that they can pray away infidelity. This is apparently his wife, not his side chick. <laughs> Because that was actually incredibly confusing to me because obviously she's much younger than him. But no, this is, this is his wife um, and his side chick is Mama D. But we'll get to that in a minute. He is going to be, uh, the source of a lot of music. <laughs> and it's good to know that uh, hood movies are continuing to stay true to themselves by letting every single movie not just be a movie, but also a chance to get your friend's mixtape out. His real like uh, stage name is Pokey Bear, of which uh, they feel the need to play his sort of theme song over and over. <laughs> throughout the movie. So in case you don't know who he really is, he is. But again, if you'd at all like to limit the sheer number of full length musical numbers throughout musical breaks, if you will, uh, again, YouTube is probably where you should check out this movie. Now, Ebony is staying with her grandmother who refers to herself as the candy lady because she sells snacks and candy to the children in the neighborhood. Grandma asks, where is Deshaun? And Ebony is like, oh, I saw him this morning. We were going to get Powerball tickets, but I ain't seen him since. Fast forward to clips in Deshaun already in like state prison. It's been what, 12 hours and he's already in a jumpsuit. Is that how quickly it goes? No, right? He's in jail and uh, he seems to be a bit upset about it. God, can I please use the mother phone? God damn. You keep walking around here fucking on pressing around and shit with that mother taser. Like I'm supposed to be jumping and running your big gun and your mother Handcuff. Can I use the mother phone, please? I'm not sure, but I think you may want to use the phone to call Ebony and ask her to give bail money $5,000 to get him out of jail. Especially because the only reason she didn't go to jail is because he didn't rat her out. Ebony is like, where am I supposed to get $5,000? And he's like, I'm good for it. I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. Just get me out of here. As soon as I get out of here, I got you. And I'm like, any watching this knows that he ain't got no money. He was just about to rob a gas station at gunpoint for the chance to win money in the lottery, only to not be able to cash it in because they're stolen tickets. <laughs> like, like, I'm sure there's a serial number on those, so okay. Meanwhile, grandma has a crush on uh, LL Hat and she's fantasizing about all the ways that he can love her better. Some of y'all 17 and don't know that reference. It's, it's an LL Cool J song. You don't need to get the joke. Just Trust me, it's funny. Grandma sees him with his girl and she thinks that they're together, like married, but apparently that's his side chick. Mama D is the side chick. Grandma says to Ebony that word on the street is, LL won the lotto, but he's keeping it real hush hush. So grandma leaves the house, right? In comes the local bully, you know, the, the strongest dude in the neighborhood or whatever, Buster. And Buster is a turtle looking mother who rides a bike that's just a hair too short for him. And <laughs> every time he's on screen, they play this hilariously dramatic and ominous music. And it's just so funny to see him come in riding his Polly Pocket bike <laughs> too closer. But anyway, Ebony goes up to Buster and asks him if she could borrow 
the $5,000 to get Deshaun out of jail. Um, she's like, he's good for it. He promised he has the money in the bank. He, like, we'll have it to you immediately afterwards. Can we do this, please? And Buster agrees. Deshaun is still in jail, having flashbacks of his life in jail. But again, may I remind you that he got there that morning. <laughs> so it's just them replaying clips that we've already seen. <laughs> but he's able to make bail. And Ebony is like, okay, I'm happy to have you out of jail. Um, let's go get the money. And um, he's like, bitch, we was about to stick up a gas station for lottery tickets. You know, I don't have any money. Why did you think I had any money? And she was like, why did you say that? He was like, I say whatever I gotta say to get the fuck out of jail. Now they're like, oh shit. We now owe the most menacing dude in the neighborhood money. And so throughout the course of this movie, they're gonna continue to try to figure out ways to pay back the, um, most intimidating man on the block. They decide to check some of those scratch off tickets. Not all of them apparently, but just a few. They pray over them and win nothing. And Sean starts singing hymns. God will do what he said he will do. Because what else can you do in this situation? So Buster comes in wanting his money as you'd imagine. And Ebony is like, Deshaun didn't go to the bank, but we gonna get it to you. We gonna get it to you. I swear to God, I'm gonna get it to you. You like my shirt? My pants, my shoes. Well, how you expect me to keep being fresh if I don't have my money? Oh, figured it out. Nigga look like Squirtle. He threatens her that if he doesn't get that money in a few days, that it's gonna be lights out for you guys. And considering he's supposed to be the scariest on the neighborhood, I find it strange that he's so patient. Everybody, Deshaun, Ebony, Grandma, everybody ends up going to a party of some sort. There's another musical number. This is around when I just accept that this movie is someone's uncle's last chance because how else do you explain why we're listening to all of this like family reunion music? And also the fact that somebody lended their music to a movie called My Side Chick Won the Lotto. There's a family reunion rendition of the Hokey Pokey. Side note, Deshaun's bass, immaculate. He should really consider beating a mug for a bag instead of stealing lotto tickets for the chance. So again, Grandma has the hots for LL Cool J and she ends up doing like a dance competition against Mama D to get his attention and it's very weird. Oh no. And rest assured again, there's also more terrible music to behold during this thing as well. Now around this time is when the movie begins to make even less sense than it already made. Remember Makeup Girl? So she's friends with Pac Remy and Pac Remy is like, LL is suddenly buying all these gifts and he bought me a car. Um, he's buying all this stuff and he's showering me with things. And I'm suspicious cause I don't know where this money is coming from, right? They both know that apparently he does business with the ball head dude that talk like Cat Williams, Dillard. So they're just kind of chalking it up to that, but they are having their eyes peeled. We never find out exactly what this business dealing is, nor does it ever have any consequences. <laughs> I watched this movie a few times to see if they ever closed up this particular plot. They never did. So I also hesitate to even talk about it. We see LL again, they play his theme song, Pokey Bear. It comes up so many times throughout the movie and you realize that it's like his theme song and that you need to know. When you leave this movie, you must know who the hell Pokey Bear is. Throughout the movie, we're gonna see Ebony, Deshaun, and a random petty thief white woman with a quick weave. And they just go around doing little petty crime to get enough money to pay back Buster. And Buster comes up again and he's like, yo, where's my money? And they're like, we still don't have it. Deshaun gets a little, little flippant at the mouth thinking that that's the best way to get out of a situation in this case. I wouldn't do that if I were you, but okay, cool. When we get it, we'll give it to you. Come back next week, we'll hustle as much as we can, but right now, well, ain't got nothing. One week to have my money. No, i shall prosper. And Buster is like, if you don't have my money, I'm gonna shoot you. Again, he is a reasonably patient man. <laughs> 
So like I was prepared for a dude that would pop off at the handle because that's kind of how you get a reputation like that. But like, he's a rather patient man, especially if we consider his um, mode of transportation as any indicator of that. He couldn't intimidate his way into a vehicle. Maybe along with being endlessly patient and intimidating, he's also an environmentalist. Good to know. LL and Pac Remy start arguing about whether or not he spent money on another woman. His excuse is that he did not spend the money on another woman, that it was actually Dillard, the ball head dude, who was using his car to cover up his cheating on his wife. And for some reason she thinks that's better. <laughs> Why well, I would be upset with my husband helping his friend cheat on his wife. Cause that shows me an issue at hand. Y'all have a relationship in which y'all will cover up for each other for cheating on your wives. Divorce, that's enough for me. Even if you haven't cheated on me yet. And he already has cheated on her before. But apparently she's like, oh, okay. Well tell him to be better to his wife. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought they weren't married. Are they married or not? LL slash Pookie Bear uh, sings another song for us. <laughs> like in a car with a random dude, just talking about how hard it is to have his wife and his side chick and how he feel bad for cheating on his wife, I guess for some reason, or just feels bad that it's taken so much energy to cheat on his wife. But he sings for us. This <laughs> sings for a straight minute and a half. And in movie time, it feels like an eternity. Steal my trouble, man. You're like, oh yeah, it's definitely almost over now. But he, he just keeps going. Thank you, Uncle Pokey. That, that's enough now. Definitely she'll be my queen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like what do you that, say? I like that much. Oh shit, is that a little scrap? No, that's not a little scrappy again. They all know each other. Um, so makeup girl confronts Dillard about his relationship with LL Pokey Bear, right? She's like, Pokey Bear is buying my friend who's who's Pokey Bear's wife a bunch of gifts and it's looking suspicious. I can tell y'all are in some shady business. And Dillard is upset because Pokey Bear is talking too much. And so he thought the best way to keep things under wraps was to yell in a public area that if he don't shut up, they're gonna go to jail. <laughs> that dang Charles, he can't hold water on his chest. He's gonna get us all thrown in jail. Dillard goes up to Pac Remy and says unprovoked and uncontextualized. I forgave your husband Charles a long time ago for trying to kill me. What? We just not gonna we just not gonna get more on that storyline. Just just moving along. How y'all become friends after okay. Y'all don't hold enough grudges for me. I just anyway, basically he says that business is good and that's why he's getting all this money. And also all the stuff that he purchased, I it was me that he did it for. I was, you know, entertaining women, whatever. Obviously it's a lie, and she knows it's a lie but she just like lets it go. White girl goes up to Buster. Apparently she buys drugs from him, pills. And he kind of intimidates her into telling him more information about Ebony and Deshaun and where they gonna get his money. She tells him that they stole a bunch of lotto tickets and that's maybe something that you should look into. After that, she steals a scooter and tries to sell it for $5. I have nothing to say about the scene. This is just hilarious. I keep it real all the time with everything that I do. Always. You know what it's hidden for. <laughs> <laughs> Pokey Bear plays again. And uh, he gets some chicken, which again, seems to be inconsequential, but it ends up being evidence for him going over to grandma house and having a little shindig of their own. They have geriatric coitus and Mama D finds out about it when she finds a piece of chicken outside of grandma's door. I don't know why she assumed it was his chicken or that this chicken means anything, but she's like, oh, he's cheating on me. Buster asked for his money again. Again, I think he's been a very polite man up until, <laughs> he's been very patient. I've sent more out of pocket emails about somebody owing me money than, <laughs> than this dude has. I mean, we on the same page, I don't get the problem. And he's like, where's my money? And they're like, we don't have it. And he's like, okay, so I'm gonna shoot y'all 
or y'all gonna give me these lottery tickets that I hear that you got. Eventually, after saying they don't have them, I don't know why they are willing to risk their lives for that as well. Um, they give over the lottery tickets and he takes them all except three that they keep to scratch off themselves later. And again, for some reason, he seems to be just cool with this exchange. <laughs> like he gave up 5,000 actual money, 5,000 actual dollars. And he's okay to get like the idea of money back as payment. And he's just cool with it. He's also like, thank you. Bring that shit out. Thank y'all for the oh. lot of tickets. Again, real polite. Certainly the most polite gangster I've ever met. Look at how just like, cool and collected, he rolls out of frame. He don't wanna fight nobody. Mama D boils water and pours it on LL Pokey Bear, threatening to shoot him uh, and tells him to get the f out of her house. She more menacing than Busta ever been, what the fuck? Give me all the jewelry I gave you, the clothes, you gonna walk out of here on the street, butt ass naked if it's my clothes that you have to wear. Also throughout the entire scene, she's calling him Lewis. They never explain that. His name is not Lewis. His, his name is Charles. <laughs> Lewis, they, all right. Anyway, that's when everybody finds out that Mama D is the side piece and that she was the one that won the lottery, not him. And that she's been funding his lifestyle up until this point, presumably funding him giving all those gifts to his wife. She shoots him <laughs> or something, whatever the scene is. <laughs> Let it be noted that Ebony was recording the entire experience, the entire situation on her phone. But he goes back to his wife fully healed, I guess, and blames his missing clothes and everything on an armed robbery. So she's just happy that he's he's okay and back home. Dijon, Ebony, and White Woman have three final scratch offs, like I alluded to before. And White Woman actually wins $5,000, but lies and says that she didn't get anything. So Makeup Girl finds out that Dillard and LL Pokey Bear are doing a deal with some judge. And we never really find out what the big deal is or why they would go to jail because of this deal, but she steals evidence and leaves. Like we don't find out if they go to jail. We don't find out if they catch her. We don't find out nothing. It's just like, yeah, she took some evidence and left. Then the kid whose scooter it was that the white woman stole, he goes up to her. I see you trying to sell my scooter. I'm gonna tell my mama. And then mama beats her ass. And that's the end of the movie. <laughs> Bitch, the credits start to roll. And I'm sitting there like. And then I'm sitting there watching the credits as another rendition of Poke Bear plays. And I'm just like, yo, this can't be it. <laughs> this can't be it. And it's not. Because after they have you sit through the entirety of Poke Bear again, you get the final closing words of Ebony via voiceover. Mama D paid Ebony $6,000 to not show anybody the video of her shooting LL Pokey Bear. So they gave $5,000 of that over to Buster and they kept the rest of the money between her and Deshaun. Deshaun was able to get his Michael Kors purse, so that's good for him. But she puts the video out anyway, so I don't know how she was able to get away with that. And LL Pokey Bear's wife finds out that he got shot by his side chick. And Deshaun ends up going back to jail because he has a slew of unpaid speeding tickets and he's back where he started arguing with people in jail. The film actually ends after he has a long tyrannical rant and another inmate sticks his finger in his food. And now the movie is actually over. And that's the movie. That's all of it. I don't really think I have anything to say final thoughts wise because this movie didn't have any cohesive thought either. <laughs> but God bless you all who make terrible movies, but do it because you know that you have the right to. <laughs> because you make the world go round, baby. You are very good for my business and I really appreciate it. With that said, if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Check me out on More Butter. I have a podcast called In Defense Of, where I talk about movies that didn't do well and I decide whether or not they deserved it. And I also uh, appear periodically on another podcast called uh, Camp Counselors. I was on there last week. By the time you've seen this video, it should be last Monday. Me and Amanda the Jedi talked about Slacks, a movie about killer jeans. Well, the video itself wasn't much about the actual movie. We were just shooting the shit, but it was fun. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.